All right, guys, uh, module six, uh, here we go. This is going to um, essentially wrap up uh, covering the tabs and, and the ability of using, uh, fully utilizing uh, My Big Campus. There are uh, There is one other thing that I will uh, go over with you guys um, here, but um, this will effectively cover all of the tabs over here on, um, on My Big Campus. Now, one of the things that I thought about as I was preparing this video here is I, I hope that you understand that as you begin to use the website um, certainly you may not go in the order in which we've covered things um, when you start thinking about implementing and using uh, my big campus in the classroom obviously one of the first things that you'll want to do um, is one of the last things that I'm going to show you here today which is create groups um, so I just hope that you guys understand that you know the, the you know, pattern that I've used of going over these tabs and the way that I've introduced them is really not indicative of uh, how you would use the website. So, um, you know, just keeping that in mind. But the last two things I want to show you here, um, again, kind of talking about the full integration of using the website in the classroom. Uh, the first one is the calendar. Um, some of you guys may uh, be more familiar with uh, like Google calendars. Um, I know over at the middle school last year we we jumped in on using Google calendars a lot. Um, obviously with uh, moving out of uh, Outlook and into Gmail, um, a lot of the shared calendars for staff, whether it is checking out laptop carts in your building or booking labs or um, resource meetings, scheduling facilities, all that stuff is transitioned onto uh, Gmail uh, via Google Calendars. However, uh, for your individual classroom, if you are choosing to use My Big Campus as a tool, to whatever capacity that is, uh, I would certainly encourage you to, to use this calendar tab. Um, it's a great way to be able to keep your uh, class classes up to date on what's going on. Great reminders for when assignment is due. I know that uh, it seems like we are going further and further away from agenda books and paper-based ways of keeping track of things uh, to being able to do this um, will, will certainly fit in with uh, that that uh, that movement so um, you know whether it's just an overview of a unit or an individual assignment date that's due or a test coming up whatever it might be utilizing this calendar uh, tab is is certainly something that I want to encourage you guys to, to take a look at and if you've ever had any uh, workings with calendars before this is going to be relatively simple but if essentially up here a type of event um, you know the, this is default is to um, create school work if you want to add that on there if you want to create a different type of event you can create new event here um, you know however whatever it relates to if it's personal group or for school and then just fill in the appropriate information here uh, and that's uh, pretty straightforward again as you can see the integration of uh, the ability to be able to attach files or pull things from your drive or library or whatever um, you know again if you are let's say creating a due date for something and you want to attach the document for the assignment in there you can do that that way there's no excuses of why well, I left the assignment in my locker or whatever they can get access to this at home um, they can open up the assignment directly from this calendar here so um, you know that's obviously uh, something there that that you want to be familiar with so um, if you need any help with integrating the calendar in your classroom or trying to figure out exactly to what capacity you could use it for uh, let me know and I'll be more than happy to come down and help you out with that but um, certainly think that's a great thing and then also too, let's not forget about the communication that this sends to the parents as well uh, it's just another layer where you can and, you know sit down with mom and dad whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conference at the beginning of the year or whatever and say look here it is there's no excuses it's there uh, it's mobile it's checkable from home it's in the classroom whatever it might be um, it, it certainly eliminates the I forgot or I left my agenda book at home or whatever so a uh, great tool there um, as I thought about this I did not have this built into the curriculum but I thought this would probably be a pretty important thing to cover with you guys and that's the creation of groups some of you may have never uh, created a group before and obviously this is the the uh, the life uh, line for uh, how you get all this information to your students you're going to want to create groups and so as you can see here I've got some groups that uh, I'm a member of or have created um, obviously the big one here is my seventh grade computer applications group that I used over at the middle school but you know just for example's sake uh, you obviously want to start up here with create new group and so again you want to go through and give it the appropriate uh, 
titles here, so I'm just going to call this one example. Now, um, one of the things that you'll need to make a determination on, and obviously for your classes, this is not going to be any type of uh, thinking involved with this. You just choose the school that you're associated with. Uh, if you want to provide a brief description, you can do that. You could even put a file uh, in for a, a photo uh, representing the class if you choose to, to want to do that. Now, right here, group versus topic. Um, for this PD um, session, I had to create this as a topic and so what that does is uh, when you create something as a topic it allows um, members from across the school corporation to come together so it says topics are uh, community related uh, they allow you to uh, be accessible by all staff members across boundaries so if you're wanting to put together something um, for other teachers and other buildings to be a part of or see you may want to keep that in mind that you would want to set this up as a topic otherwise you just set it up as a group uh, you would hit save it's going to bring up this home page okay so here's your group title here's your school that you're associated with owned by has your name in there and then now these are the um, tabs up here at the top that you'll use to manage your group okay and you can see your calendar is built in here so anything that you would add in on your calendar would appear here for this group uh, resources tab I use this a ton in computer applications there were so many files that I had to get to my students whether we were working on Word or Excel or Google Docs or whatever, uh, any type of, of file that I need my students to be able to open and work off of, I would send and post via the resources tab. So uh, that would probably be one of the great things that you could do uh, for your classes is to use that. Um, there is a chat feature. I think it's by default disabled. Uh, you can enable it in the settings up here if you want your uh, class to be able to have that feature. There's also a chat feature on Google Docs which we'll get to in the Google Apps for Education um, discussions. So again if you want to uh, post a topic, add a discussion topic for your class to have to comment on, I've done that before in the past. A great way to get those uh, nonverbal communicators involved, people who don't want to openly communicate in class uh, but have great ideas that they can add to discussion threads. Um, announcements, again, um, you see that I've used this in the PD group before just to kind of give your group, uh, your classes heads up on what's happening. You could use this to tease what's going on for the day or, hey, don't forget about your homework for tonight or whatever it might be, uh, anything generic there. Uh, last thing I want to show you here is the members. So um, this is a little tedious. Uh, you, there's no way around it. Um, you have to build your classes in. Um, at the beginning of every year, the last couple years I've built my seventh grade computer applications groups in um, one big group um, for the entire seventh grade and you just literally have to go in and, and type in the user's name so um, as you begin to add users in uh, you can do it that way the advantage of doing it this way is that then you now have the group set if you wait and have them request to join then you have to um, wait for them to get in your classroom get logged in um, and and be able to request uh, to join so I just always build them in manually and you can just start typing in um, typing in names here and it should search for uh, users so if you, you know you've got your class roster or whatever uh, you can search for the people by typing in their name and it comes up pretty quickly that way um, so again that's where you would add in your group and if you want to do a first period group a second period group uh, you can certainly do that um, so this is a great um, way you can build those in um, you know period at a time or whole group at a time that that's up to you uh, but it's a great way to be able to manage um, your your classes or uh, periods throughout the day so um, that's how you would build that in and then once you've got that in then you're good to go there there is an admin option up here where you can control the group um, there's probably some things in here I don't want to take time to go through each and every one of these things but um, you probably want to take a look at um, some of the options up in here uh, in terms of you know kids being able to communicate and look for things um, on on the group and whatnot so anyway um, that's the calendar and groups feature um, the, these are the last few things that we're going to take a look at I have one more video that I'm going to create and put um, a bonus module in it's on creating bundles um, I think that is is kind of ties in with schoolwork a little bit uh, but I'll talk to you a little bit more about that um, in that video and, and show you how to create a bundle that's essentially what you 
you have seen here uh, with this PD group for my big campus. I have unveiled uh, the entire curriculum via a bundle. Um, so I'll talk to you guys a little bit about that. But at this point, hopefully you have a pretty firm grasp on how to use this, at least on a um, basics level. Um, if you have any questions or want to develop uh, this in any way, certainly encourage you to take time and do that. But I think overall, your classes will and students will be excited about using this. I hope for you as an educator, as a teacher, um, that it gives you a lot of, of power and ability to do things all on one website. You know, when we go back to what we talked about with it being an LMS, a learning management system, it really does provide you with um, some great ability, um, at, you know, all on one website. So again, if you guys ever have any questions or need any help with anything, please do not hesitate to call or email and I'd be more than happy to stop by and help you out.